This, I feel like if I could seal the unit up good enough, I could back it in the lake. Yep. Because I think it would float. It Difference in lamination today and and way we did it 20 years ago is really laziness because keep the weight out and make the unit stronger and you get rid of the aluminum so most places frame out a window they'll frame out a cargo door and then they'll just route it with a bearing router lamination was designed to be done where your glue is your bond and your glue is your strength. So every time you put aluminum in a sidewall, you actually weaken that, that bond. So what we did to save weight and make the unit stronger is, we have aluminum perimeter, we put aluminum in for your awning and your entry door, everything else is jig routed. So that cuts out aluminum, which is extremely expensive, it's heavier, and you don't have as good a bond. Okay. So in the lamination process, to me, that's what makes the road different more the way it was designed to be done 20 years ago but manufacturing is more dictated we got to go faster less mistakes we don't we aren't remaking jigs all the time and they just frame everything which you pay for you pay for the element so for me we got back to the basics of what lamination started out as 20 years ago which is actually better What? That's really the big thing this year for us, is getting better at what we're already doing. You know, it takes more time, takes more work, but go back right. to the what the nation was designed for. More aluminum does not help lamination. It hurts it. So that's what we did with the road. And we're trying to keep the cost out of it, trying to keep the weight out of it. So here's an example of a, a non-framed out window. So there's no aluminum around that. There's no radius blocks to print through. There's no tube to print through. But this is actually stronger this way than if it were framed out cold. And there's no wood in this. So if, this, if your window leaks, if you ever have a leak in this coach, nothing structural will mold or fall apart because there's no glue on, right? So you could take a route out, throw it in a bucket of water. Five years later, you can come back and no do it. So in a row, floor, sidewalls, roof construction, no mold, no possibilities for water. You know, it's one of the one of the reasons we designed it the way we did, okay? For me, I'm proud of, I've been doing this for Forest River, for Thor, for Aerolite, for Trailite, private companies, public companies, my whole life, okay? So I've done it wrong a lot a lot a lot of years okay i've seen things that aren't right but when you work in a corporate structure you don't make decisions you build what they tell you to build even if you know what's wrong even if you know what's wrong right. in a lot of cases there's too many layers to ask permission it's too big a hassle to make a change here if you call me it's that, fixed that's what i'm going i don't at. have to ask and while she's while, while there people can hear this that later is this is what i sell to our customers sure is that hey if there's an issue that's why we like working with small travel life yeah they care about their product they care about their customers and if i have an issue i call we we'll talk about it i can get in touch with somebody right away immediately you know what I'm i don't want them to buy one because it fell apart because of water or mold mold is a huge issue right as soon as something stick built gets wet the retail customer wants everything replaced right because of mold then i'm not saying they're wrong i'm just saying without formaldehyde and all the things that used to be in wood they now mold instantly that can't mold at least your yeah. sidewall your floor your roof your rear and front walls none of that can mold can't mold can't de can't There's mold no can't wood right so the floor cannot rot out you can get a cabinet wet enough to mold but changing a style on a cabinet's a lot easier than changing a front wall or a sidewall and potentially hidden mold that you can't see. Right. It can't happen. So right. if you want, we'll walk through this maze and we'll go upstairs. I'll show you how we build the roof. The rear wall, front wall, and roof is all one piece. There's not another manufacturer in this industry that's doing that. I promise you. Not an R-Pod, not a hitchhike or whatever these hikes, okay? Most of them have a front wall section, maybe two that they screw together, and then your roof, those sections screw together, 
All those pieces can move, pull apart, be screwed together wrong, not enough screws. The way this is manufactured, it can't be. That can't be screwed up. a lot of the rogue similarities. A lot of the rogue similarities are now getting pushed into the truck camper. Uh, just because we finally slowed down and had the time to, to do that. You know what I mean? We've been wanting to do it, but now we can. So when we build your, your front wall, rear wall and your roof, it's, it's one piece on this table. We lay bands up. Yes, they've got one. They lay these out against that fence and then they lay all their tubes. Their window openings, vents are all predetermined. All those tubes are welded to this band. And then we take it off and flip it. And we Sika flex your Asdale panels to that. So there's no staples. Um, on those 14 footers and the 16s, it's two 12 foot pieces, so you should have one seam at your air conditioner and that's it. The rest should be seamless. So how we achieve that is, is we do it all flat, then they install the what we call the inner wrap, which is what you're looking at here. They start that in the front, screw it to the floor, and then wrap it all the way around. Once they get that wrapped around, then they put the outer band on. One continuous piece, which makes that an extremely strong little knife. bad mouth anybody but I'm just saying from the past what I learned didn't really work they use wood and it's plywood on edge it's four sections to do the front and the rear and they screw those to their wall and then they screw them together and it's all wood it's plywood on the edges and it's two by twos across and you're literally screwing through the edge of plywood yeah so everywhere you run a screw you're just blowing that out right. and then they have a little section right in the middle that's laminated flat laminated roof that sets in there but the rest is literally stick through. See, and Flim Z is up. That is banana the proof peel. for everybody. That there is no wood. There is no wood. Structure. If we need a backer, it's an aluminum tube. We don't put wood in the structure anywhere. Right. Only in the cabinets. Which is just the quality. It's strong. It's the skin is really cosmetic. Right. We we put the skin on. We we batten, insulate, and then we stick the skin under the front and we wrap it all the way over. Um, Seeker flex to each tube, Seeker flex to the outer tube, and then obviously inch and a half. One, you're 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 Seeker flexing. I can see it. Every component, every every inner wrap, mm -hmm. or every wrap on on the inner tube is sealed mm -hmm. and stuck to it. Every outer root wrap is the same exact way. You're hitting every one of those when you lay that roof yep. on. Yep. So that's one of the things I'm the most proud of. Like I said, I want to try this. And on the first 14 FL, we laid that out. We, we all carried it on there and the thing just wrapped over. I'm like, why have we not been doing this before? But the real key is it's slower. I mean, you can't go up there with a bunch of staple guns and bang out 25 roofs in six hours. You know what I mean? Oof. You have to weld every tube. You're not you're not running across this rack with a piece of rubber roof like, right, like everybody right, else right, in the right, industry right. and dropping it down and moving it down the line in 10 you, seconds. You do gain, you gain some of that time back in spots, but we're spending money. we got two guys up here welding all day. So, yeah. You know, you're, we're spending the money, but you do get a little bit of it back. You definitely get it back on the warranty and the quality end. Yeah, sure. You're not taking the cheapest, fastest, easiest way out. Right. Where is reinforcement of aluminum? The whole perimeter in these walls. The whole perimeter you is. See the whole. Yep. It's wrapped yep, all, all the way around. around. Okay. Um, your entry door, because of the slamming of the door, the, the, there's a three-inch tube on the back for the grab handle, yep. and then there's two three-inch tubes for your front door awning. Okay. And the rest put, is in the period. It, go ahead. The strength is in the lamination. It's this right here. Yep. It's in the bonding of the it's inside in the outside wall. Vacuum bonding.
Your doors are Sika Flex then. Okay. You put the four screws in there just to hold it till the glue's dry, really? Okay. Every hole is pre-drilled up there and every stinking hole has a grommet in it. It's the little things that make the difference. Right. You get a short right here on a retail customer's unit, good luck. So we grommet every single hole, both sides of the tubes. It is literally fiberglass, like the actual not. When people think of fiberglass, they think of a boat, but this is like really fine um, woven fiberglass okay. that they, they bond together and turn it into paneling. Asdale is, in simple terms, blue on replacement. Mm -hmm. But it's no wood, so no, wood. No, wood. No, wood no wood at all. No, wood. No, wood. no trees, no wood, no mold, uh, you know, and no, no, no wood water. backing. There's is no one wood of the... at all. No, we have put uh, laminated samples of that in a bucket. That's what we want to do. Five gallon bucket so for a year, year and a half, and yeah. it was exactly the same. I could put structure in my sidewall and I could mount independent wheels on on my my box and put uh, mount the uh, A-frame to the front. I don't need your chassis. You're literally only using their chassis. Carry my carry my own. And you are you have a pre-built where it is bolted on your frame. Mm -hmm. And that's as simple as that. So really our our box, our unit is helping this chassis because we glue it. And it's not only bolted, it's Sika Flex to the frame. Wow. Okay, so that to me here's what I was talking about. Where this is this is it. This is this is all they're putting on their frame right here to bolt the chassis on. And then your your springs are coming down here, which it's your we put four bolts to the floor and then we'll reach out here and we'll put a self tapper into a cross member or two down through there. But it's it's glued to the chassis. Basically, your bolts are just holding your glue until it dries. Yeah. And so we can flip it's it not going to go anywhere. Yeah, because we put it in that frame flipper. We flip it upside down and do all the tanks, the wiring, the gas lines, axle, and then we flip it back over. I wish they had one in the flipper. We glue the leno down. Um, the reason this is cut back and we'll cut the other side back is we seek a flex the sidewall to the floor. Okay. So we didn't want to seek a flex it to the leno. Sure. So we Smart. cut that back so your Seeker Flex gets to the floor. You're so grabbing it. We glue it to the frame, we glue sidewalls to the floor, we glue all the other components to the sidewall, the outer's glued, everything is, I feel like in, in three weeks after this is built, you could remove every fastener and use it. Again. I was just getting ready to say, your unit almost sounds like it is constructed together with Seeker Flex, which also is sealing it of any other issues. You're not you're not running ten million screws or bolts or anything else in it. It's very obvious. Well, and, and we constructed these parameter tubes for fastening, really, till stuff dries. Sure. Uh, if you notice, your floor only has this is your this is you're looking at the aluminum in your floor. That's it. That's it. And they're solid. They don't have any. They collapse. Like those composite floors and all that stuff in the in the old I call them traditional units. Mm -hmm. You know, they they'll start giving and waving. Mm -hmm. They'll just... stay solid. This, I feel like if I could seal the unit up good enough, I could back it the light. Yep. Because I think it would float. It would float. And number two, nothing, if something gets wet, it's just not going to go back. 
We want to do that someday. You, you really need to just do one with no interior cabinets as well. You want to wait, but just just take the shell and We're we're it. really wanting to do that. That would be awesome. Just take it up to Wall of C. Wall of C's right over here. I live on Wall of C. It's 3,500 3, acre lake. That would be cool. Uh, we just want to All your interior panels are not on the 16th because there's more panel. And on your regular road, you only have one wood panel in that unit. And that's that's the panel with the, the switches screw to you because the, the downfall to Asdale is Asdale that's not laminated has almost zero screw retention. All shower walls are Asdale. All shower walls are. Even in the 16th. In the 16th, you'll see everything in this bathroom is Asdale. 